Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream of adventure with me, Louie. Level up with Louie. Uh, Mad Thomas Roberts, Pexelroy, Scared Egg One, Logan. Hello, everybody. And that was an awesome. Thank you for saying something about that hold screen. That screen was classic Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Masters book. That's like the cover right there. That one. That's the one I grew up with. That cover. Like one day, I just I expect to be that guy. I'm gonna buy a green cloak and I'm gonna become that dude. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, everybody. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Rob, I thought that was you. That seemed like a very fitting name for you. Good to see everybody. Uh, I have a little bit of water here with me. Going to take a sip of water. Don't forget to sip some water. It's 11.01 my time. 2.01 where you are, possibly. Maybe it's 10.01 where you are. In a couple minutes, we'll get started. We'll let a couple people catch up. Technology, you know, everybody's probably pressing buttons on their computers, turning up volumes, messing with things. Speaking of volumes, if I have, uh, I have a little bit of music going in the background. My music today is uh, Harry Potter selections. This might get the whole video pulled off the internet later because legally I don't own the copyright to play that music. But it's just in the background. I'm a small time streamer, so they just might let it be. If you have some music you want to put in the background, uh, let me know. Next time we do this, maybe I'll pull up your music. But for me, when I'm drawing, uh, I like to have a little inspirational music since we're drawing some adventure items today. Harry Potter music. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, Weird Tiger. Anybody else having a problem with the video cutting in and out? Uh, yeah, let me know. I'm trying to, we're trying to limit all of our internet here just so this one computer is on the internet, but we're in the middle of the desert in Arizona at a golf resort. And, you know, like maybe all the golfers are using the internet right now. Tigger, Tigger. I have my, uh, I'm looking over to uh, the side here where I have my chat on a separate screen going on. Uh, good music choice. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right, guys. Uh, we might need to get started here. We're at a few minutes in. Thank you. First of all, thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for commenting on the Facebooks and through different levels and uh, being with me as I advertise through the different streams from like uh, London Broil to Little Empire to Level Up with Louis to my page. I know it might have hit you a couple times. Thanks for being patient with all of that. After this, uh, I will, the link on Level Up with Louie, if anybody wants to post comments there, if you're not on Twitch, but you'd like to get, reach out to me, go through Level Up with Louie on the Facebook page or that latest post saying it's a half an hour away, and I'll check comments there afterwards if you have anything, anything from uh, something you'd like to see, or uh, be like, hey dude, change the hat, you know, let me know, please let me know. Okay, I will, I will do that, I will do that. Uh, Rabbit Hutch. I will do that. Yeah, I'm thinking about rereading all the Harry Potter, too. Like, that's that's on my list. Hey, watch them and, uh, thanks. It's a fun hat. Watch them, read them, love them, need them. You know, the classics. Uh, one more minute here. We'll start at 11.05 and get started. Uh, I'm excited to do some drawing with you. We're going to do some exercises in the beginning of the drawing uh, to get, uh, get our pencil hand flowing some, and then we're going to get into some drawing. I have a little list of things I want to get into. We'll see how much we can get at uh, for this next hour. And then we'll go from there. Uh, if anybody can guess uh, this shirt, where that's from, what, what that design is from, you win uh, my virtual high five. You can guess that. Yeah, all, the, all those movies are great. I pop in between those Harry Potter movies. I, I pop, put them on a lot. It's going to be strange for me when I start drawing, checking the, the, the chat screen. So don't be mad if I'm not fully checking the, sat, the chat screen and I have to scroll back a little and, and check it out some. I'm going to do my best to kind of bounce in between them. But once I start drawing, I'll be very focused on that a little more and less on the chat screen. All right, five minutes here. Let's go over to the uh, the drawing scene, my friends. 
Look at that. Infinite regression. Uh, you can see me now there. And you can see up on the side there some of my hints and tips for this uh, drawing. Drug, look, okay, also, here we go. Here we go, friends. I hope you have this going on. You have your notebook. Beautiful notebook you have with some paper in there. Maybe you just have some paper. You're going to need that. Paper. Paper. That's part of the deal here. You're going to need a pencil. I recommend you have a pencil sharpener nearby, too. I, me, I love a finely sharpened pencil. Oh, look at that. That's a beaut right there. That's real nice. Finely sharpened pencil. You have a pen of some sort, ink. I like uh, using these ones. You can find them at Michael's. Uh, or you might just find a pen around the house. Any sort of pen. Doing some ink over pencil is what we're going for today. And then having a nice eraser around. Sometimes the eraser on the bottom of a pencil doesn't quite work. So you want to have a uh, little... This guy works out great for me, the pen towel. And like I showed my nephew a few days ago, you can clean these on the carpet. Just find a spot your parents aren't going to notice. And you just can clean it off on the carpet. That's what we always did when we were growing up. Good times. Drink some water. Take some breaths. I want to tell everybody, uh, we're going to get into some drawings here. Uh, kind of adventure items. Things like that. Stuff that I've been working on for some uh, Dungeon Masters, uh, DMs Guild products that my friend Jimmy and I have been putting out. Uh, some of these images and drawings we've used in there, we've messed around with in there. Uh, so before we get into actually doing some of the drawings, I want to work on some exercises. So everybody, get out your piece of paper, get your pencil, and then uh, I'm going to lead you through some exercises we're going to be doing right here. It's a fun mug. That was a, that's, a, that's Goodly Woods. If you want to check them out online, Goodly Woods, they do beautiful wooden mugs. All right, let's see. Uh, the exercises, the beginning for the exercises. I'm going to do these in pencil, and then we'll do a couple of them uh, over in ink later. But right now, uh, I have my pencil out, and I'm going to start. Let's start doing some circles, friends. We're going to do some circles, some basic circles here. Can everybody see that? Circle, circle. You can go quick. We're trying to just do a, a basic circles going on. It's getting some good old circles. Sometimes those circles don't line up perfectly. Sometimes they're not perfectly round. Look at that guy. But we're just going for some circles. Just get that hand used to doing one continuous stroke of a circle. Not too sketchy going around. Don't go sketchy sketch circle. We're just getting our hand freed up. Nice, nice circle like that. Oh, I'm sorry about that constant buffering. Well, you can maybe listen to me still. Kara, maybe you can just listen, have the audio on in the background. And then I will be putting these videos up afterwards. I'll be uh, putting them up on my YouTube channel so you can check it out then. You can stick around in the chat, chat with some people there maybe. Alright, just getting some circles going. Get those circles going. Look, mine are already getting a little bit better. Oh, that was a nice one. That was a nice one. One even stroke. Okay, and so you notice I'm starting some of my circles up at the top and coming down with them. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to go the opposite direction. That starts to bend your, bend your brain a little bit. Opposite direction with your circles. Again, I can't see myself right now, like uh, what I look like or what's going on. I know I have that list up on the side over there, one of those sides. Uh, and I am happy you're here. Like, it's, it's very cool. I don't know if any of you remember Commander Mark in Secret City, but that was one of my favorite shows growing up and really gave me a love for drawing. And his calm, relaxed attitude when drawing was so, so beautiful. Thanks, Rabbit Hutch. All right. There we go. That's some just some circles. Getting used to some circles. I feel like I have some good ones. Look at that guy. That didn't connect there. Oh, so sad. There we go. All right. We got some circles on your page. Great, great, great. Now let's, uh, we're going to work on some lines, some basic lines. And what we're going for here is to make some parallel lines. Uh, so if you start with one line, pull up another one real quick, and we're just going to get smaller with them as we go along. Smaller lines. Trying to make them parallel to each other. Get them smaller and smaller. The idea here is to dash them pretty quick. 
and it takes a while. At first, your lines might be a little funky like this. That's fine. The idea is you practice. You practice, practice. Boom, 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 boom. Just sketching out some lines, making that happen. Getting smaller, getting smaller, and then you can go from the opposite direction. Go small and get bigger with them. Ooh, look at those. They're not as good for me. I love seeing where I where my drawing needs to improve, or just like some things I can practice. Like that one wanted to be longer than the other one, but I'm like, all right, it, it didn't quite work. So let's see, let's see if we can get them longer as they go. There we go, a little better on that one. You'll find you have one direction of drawing that works better than another, but just like with juggling and other skills, you want to practice where it's not working. Like I did those circles in the opposite direction, and I'll, I'll go back and practice some of those because I'm not as good at them. The only way you're gonna get better is by practicing. 11-11. Knock on wood, my friends. Knock on wood. All right, so we got some lines. We got some circles. Just working out the hand a little bit, working out the pencil hand. All right, I'm erasing those, but you guys, uh, that's probably on the same page. Sometimes you might want to um, jump to another page or another piece of paper as we start to fill up some of these things. All right, two other things we're going to work on in our, uh, in our getting ready for drawing session here. This one is going to, I call it the tube. And this is going to be used for the monster we're going to be drawing today. What we're going to do is kind of draw an S shape. All right? S shape, a squiggly shape, something like that. All right? Something like that. And we're going to be putting a circle on either end. Now here's the part where we start to make the tube. All right? We're going to follow along this edge here with another line coming up and then connecting to that circle there. And we're gonna take that other side, connect it, and now we kinda of have a tube there going on. That middle line will come in handy when we do a little bit of inking here. So we're gonna do a circle, a circle, a circle, circle on the ends of that squiggly line. And again, we're gonna follow along with it. Look at my little shaky line there. Ah, oh, that's a little adorable. We call that one the frightened snake right there. Doing these tube lines. Ooh, that one got a little close there. Uh, now the reason I'm not actually drawing on my piece of paper and I have a, I'm using Photoshop, I have it up here with a pencil and a pen inked in there. I found that uh, setting up my camera with the pencil, the pencil would be right up in the screen and the focus would get all funky. And it was it just wasn't conducive to you actually seeing what I was drawing here. Here you don't the pencil isn't in the way. And I, I'm trying to use a basic, basic shapes, basic lines. Like nothing here is computer specific. Like everything I'm doing here, you can do on your page right now, your piece of paper with your pencil and pen. All right, so we have some tubes going on. Super cool. I hope you have a couple of tubes. Now get out your get out your pen. Get out your marker, get out your pen. And after, after we do a little bit of inking there, we're going to go back and erase this. Now these tubes on one end is going to be an eyeball. All right. Let me get my ink out. Let me get my pen out here. Getting my pen out on my ink layer. Here we go. Boom. Some sort of monster eye there. And then we're going to go and trace back on these lines, just the outside ones. Now, when you're drawing and sketching, your pencil lines are there with they're your idea. They're, they're, they're what you're going for. You don't have to hit them exactly when you're going back and doing your drawings, all right? You can, uh, you can kind of go use them a little bit, or even your hand as it brings that ink over top is not going to line up exactly with your, uh, with your pencil drawing underneath. Man, a little bit of depth to it. Now, here's where this middle line is going to come in handy. Um, we're going to use that kind of as a shading line. We're going to take some of those lines we drew earlier, and we're just going to come from the middle line there and come down and do these little hash marks, and I'll give a little bit of shading to the side of our tube there. Now, this tube is an eye stalk. Later on, we're going to be drawing a beholder. A beholder is a beast that's like a big circle, 
and it has like 10 eye stalks coming off of it. I found that while drawing these, I couldn't put all those eye stalks on there because it was like too many. So we'll only do like five or so. Again, that middle line gives you an idea about where you can draw those little hash marks that gives it a little bit of shading. We got that going on? Looking good, everybody. I would love for you guys after this on that Level Up with Louie uh, page to put a post or two about like uh, up, take a picture of your drawing and upload it there and I'll share them with the class you know we can all see them all right last one we can kind of go quickly on these again these are just kind of get our hand used to what we're going to be doing here I'm just going to go quick to see what we got you know sometimes it's all about the quick even flowing stroke there all right those look like scary eye stalks ah this guy has teeth right there Teeth on the other side, double eye. There is a monster in D&D that's kind of like this. It's like almost a bunny rabbit. I forget what it's called, but it hides like a, in a tree stump. All right, all right. Speaking of tree stumps, the last little piece we're going to be doing here before we get on to the drawings for our warm-up is we're going to be doing a little bit of a wood texture. And I've been working on wood textures for like treasure chests and benches and tables, things like that. Uh, in a wood texture, it takes a light touch sometimes. I'm going to go back to my pencil here. I'm going to move my page a little bit. Uh, and I'm just going to draw a little bit of a rectangle. It's my pencil, basic rectangle. And now the wood texture in here, it, it, you kind of just roll with it. I, I I start with something in the middle that's almost a circle like this. Bring a line up to it, lines, and then I'm I'm kind of flowing with that there. I'm coming up and over it. So you get kind of this light line. I'm going to come back with my ink now with my pen. Yeah, right? Exactly. It's fun to see how everybody's different technique on how they draw, how they might do things, what what they're up to. Totally Paxel Roy. Remember uh, Kais? Remember uh, the Capital Area Internet Users Group, man? That was back in the day. Me and Pexaroy used to be on like some of the first BBSs before the internet was the internet. There we go. There's some, there's some wood right there. A little bit of a wood texture. We've got a board. Let's say it's a broken board. A jaggy little end over there. Jaggy little end over here. Somebody just, that, that beast up there just broke that board and is throwing it. Throwing it right at you. Look out. Ow. Yes, slow speeds everywhere. That's how the internet used to be, kids. It used to be slow. Like, if you wanted, like, the picture you'd be seeing right now would be almost impossible. There was no video. It would take, take 20 minutes to, for just one picture to show up. If somebody was like, hey, I drew this, you'd send it over. You'd, you'd be, you have to go... Go use the bathroom, come back, check it out, make dinner, come back. Oh, there's that picture. You, got, you don't know how easy you have it, kids. Enjoy, enjoy. All right, here we go. There's some, this is some practice art. Again, the wood texture, nice and light, very thin strokes. You can kind of do some work like that, like bring it back. No, see how that start, looks a little bit like wood? Everybody's wood texture is going to be a little bit different. And I would recommend go look at some wood tables and stuff. And as you're looking at it, just do some drawing, some light drawing with that wood. Give some wood texture, wood texture. Looking good, everybody. I love it. We're going to get rid of our ink. Okay, so underneath here, you see me pointing, and you can't see my finger pointing. Here we go. Here we still see our pencil line. You can uh, go get your eraser. You can erase some of that pencil line in, in there. I'm going to zoom in on that. Erasing some pencil line. Erasing some pencil line. And then you can see your ink line is not exactly how your pencil line is, but that's fine. That's, that's part of the drawing process. Like the pencil there is to give you an idea. So when you come back with your ink, you can kind of finish up that idea and clean it up as you go. There we go. Nice, everybody. Looking good, everybody. Thanks. I I am doing well. Thank you. I it's great to be here with all of you. Like that that definitely makes my day. 
for sure. All right, so we've done some practice exercising. We've done some tubes, some circles, some lines, some wood texture. Okay, last one, last one. How much of this are we gonna get to? Like uh, somebody told me we might not be able to get to all my drawings today, but we're doing all right, 20 minutes in. The last little thing I want you to practice here is uh, some points. Points, points, and then a little bit of an angled point. Look at that, almost looks like a horn. Point, point, and again, all these are just little pieces we, we're gonna be using for some of the things we're gonna be drawing today. Angled point, do something funky. Look at that, look at that angled point. Points, angled points. Okay. Got some of those going on. Hello, Tiny Tin Ad. Screen names are always so hard. Uh, Tiny Tina. Oh, t I think I might know who you guys are. Yes, yes, Justin. Hello, guys. Hello. Glad you could make it. Sometimes with screen names, you don't know who exactly everybody is, but you have a feeling. Uh, let's see. I'm going to erase this ink now. Getting another page, there's some of my pencil left over, erasing that. All right, now we're gonna get on to actually drawing some of the items today. We're gonna draw a few things today. Uh, the first one, let's do a treasure chest as our first one. We're gonna be using some of that wood texture. I'm gonna show you how to draw a treasure chest from above and kind of a 3D perspective. So let's start with the, uh, let's start with the above of the treasure chest. You can see it. Over on the side, those are some actual treasure chests I drew for one of the items in the DMs Guild that Jimmy and I created. Uh, so that's actually people are playing some Dungeons and Dragons with that tiny treasure chest on their map, which is exciting. Very cool to me to know that uh, some other fellow D&Ders are out there using some of my artwork. Sometimes I catch things in the chat, and then I look up, I think my brain thinks, and I, I lose my train of thought. Yes, you are all very mysterious. I, and I appreciate that, my friends. I appreciate that. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Beast One. Scared Echo One. Hello. Great name, Scared Echo One. Great name. All right, let's see here. A treasure chest. Of course, this is going to start off as a, a, it's, it's almost, it's a rectangle pretty much is our basic form of a treasure chest here. Rectangle. So I'm doing this in a very light pencil stroke. Very light pencil stroke. A rectangle is longer on one side than the other. We all know that, I think. If you don't, I'm glad I got to tell you. We're just doing some sketch lines here. This is our pencil side. A couple sketchy lines there. Yeah! Kristen and Brooke. Hi, y'all. Hi. You guys helped me get onto Twitch here a little bit. There's a few of you who uh, said I should be getting Twitch and getting on here. You guys were there. Um, a couple other friends. Melissa. There we go. There's a chest. Now, uh, treasure chests in my world have uh, like uh, two iron straps on top of them. So we're going to put those in next here. They kind of go along the top and they're holding all those boards of the top of the treasure chest together. So that comes next. Again, this is in pencil. And we're going to go back over in ink and do some cleaning up of all this. Yes, I, I knew it was you, Tina and Justin. I knew it was you. When I saw Tina there, I was like, ah. Right, yeah, Twitch has come in handy. There's been a couple other nights I've been just on here working on some other projects, and it was fun to have this one person check in uh, on Twitch. There we go. All right. That's the two straps up top. Then we have a little locking mechanism down here. So we'll just do kind of a little square down there for the locking mechanism. And now here's where the wood comes through. We're going to have... There's wood slats on the top of the treasure chest. And I'm going to draw straight through these bands we have here. Again, when we do the ink, we're going to clean this up. I'm just going to add some boards in here. All right. You can see it's starting to look like a treasure chest a little bit there. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a very light, like these are individual boards. I'm going to do some very light wood texture in here. It's very simple, very light. Kind of the uh, pencil is barely touching the paper. And again, this 
I might even save this for the ink in. Like you might not even need to do this on the pencil level. Because when you come back with ink, you might not be exactly right on top of those lines. And again, with the wood texture, it's a very light touch. Just very, very light on there. Not going too hard. Uh, but that's that's the basic top of the chest there, all right? Uh, and then what I like to do is to kind of finish this off as I'm putting these little rivets in here on the top of the chest. Right along that iron band holding the top of the chest. We've got rivets, and then if you want to, if you want to make this chest carryable, we put some little handles on the side here. Looking good, little handle. That way those pirates can just carry that treasure away. Looking good. I'm going to take a sip of water. If you got water, let's take a sip of water together. Don't forget to drink water. I haven't been staying as hydrated as I should. Drinking water. That wink was for the person who reminds me to drink water, and I don't. I drink a whole lot of coffee. I have my water. The water today I have has a little bit of a uh, black tea flavor in it. Just pour a little black tea in it, give it a little bit of flavor. I'm reading the uh, reading it all some. Yes, I do. I do. Remember, yeah, espresso. Remember those days. All right, here we go. So we got some ink on top. We're going to get our uh, our pen out. Now here's where you want to control your line a little bit more with the ink. And I'm going to work uh, down from what the layer on top down to what's underneath. So you'll see what I'm doing here. The first thing I'm going to do, the thing that's closest to us in a way, are these uh, are the, are the straps on the top. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to turn my paper. Sometimes it helps to uh, turn your notebook because your arm works in a certain way so if you turn your notebook under you don't try to draw when your hands up funky or something you gotta turn your notebook so that's what I just did there this is the little turn symbol in Photoshop I'm gonna draw these straps here and I'm gonna kinda of pay attention to this a little bit so I can get some nice even strokes there See how it's broken up there a little bit? That's kind of nice. I, I like that look, but I'm going to save that sort of feeling for the wood underneath. And I'm going to go back in. I'm going to darken that up a little bit. Again, these are two parallel lines. I went over the edge there, but that's all right. That's one of our favorites say, happy accidents, right? I'm going to do these little bolts. Nice little circles in there. These are just teeny circles. Looking good, everybody. Looking good. Can't wait to see some of your drawings on the page. Looking good in the neighborhood. Now, I don't recommend you go out and hang out in your neighborhood right now. I mean, if you have, if everybody has a backyard, go hang out in your own backyard. Enjoy that. Wave to the neighbors. I'm glad you're here in my backyard right now. Hanging out online, digital universe we all live in. All right, all right. So those are our that those are our bands up top. Now I'm going to go in and uh, the next level down for me is kind of the outline of the whole treasure chest. So I'm going to be doing that. That's inset a little bit from those iron bands, so I can draw that. And see how I'm not following exactly those pencil lines, but those pencil lines give me a good idea about where I'm headed. So I know where to begin and end this line. Again, I'm turning my notebook. I'm turning my notebook so I can just uh, keep my hand and use a stroke like this instead of coming in funky or doing a backward stroke. Like You'll see some artists don't turn it all, but most artists will turn their notebook as they work because they have a natural flow from about their uh, their elbow down and a lot of people are just in the wrist. They have a nice, they can really control those strokes there. So uh, you turn your notebook. Boom, look at that. Real nice, real nice flow there. Ooh, and this last little part here. All right, so that's the basic treasure chest. I'm gonna add these handles on. I'm gonna kind of round them a little bit. It's a little bigger than I wanted, but it's ink, so 
That's there to stay, my friends. There to stay. There we go, a little treasure chest. Then I'm gonna add this little lock. I'm gonna kind of give it a little boom, 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 boom. There we go, a little something. That looks a little locky right there. A little muddled, a little messy. Like if you're really getting in there, you might, you might clean it up and make it a little cleaner. Add a little decoration to it. Something. You can work on all different types of locks. And now, now we're going to go back and put some of this wood texture in up here on this treasure, treasure chest. We're going to start with the, the actual boards. And I'm going to kind of just give a, a little bit of a line here. It's okay if it's a little thinner, a little messy. Like, I'm defining a texture more than making a piece at this point. Open there. Now this is also, if you have different types of markers or pens, some of them are thicker than others. Like these lines here, oh, I, would, I want to erase that little guy right there. These lines here, I would do with diff a different size marker maybe. And now I'm going to go back and, so those are the boards, so those are the slats of the top of the treasure chest. And now I'm going to go back and just put some very light with the pen, some very light wood texture on here. Just barely letting the pen scrape along. Just give it some wood texture. Like you'll find different things that make wood look right to you eventually. Like, I feel like I'm just getting used to my wood texture and how I, how I enjoy doing it. Like, these lines come from the growth of the trees and how, how the layers of the tree grow that gives you these beautiful wood textures. So anything that's a little off or a little different was just a fun year for that tree. It was just a little off, a little different. Trees don't grow in perfect straight lines. So your wood texture shouldn't be perfect straight lines. I got a little thick there on those. I was a little rushed it. There we go. There's a little bit of wood texture, a little something more back here. All right, that's a feeling of a treasure chest. It's kind of a little shorter on this side, but that, that's the general idea of like looking straight down onto the top of a treasure chest. I'm gonna go in here and get my eraser and I'm going to erase those pencils. Grab your eraser. You can erase. You some. You gotta wait for the ink to dry. Sometimes just don't. After you ink, let it draw something else, and then come back to erasing it. Sometimes I will smudge my ink if I jump in too quick with the eraser. And you want to have a light touch with your eraser. You don't want to go too hard and heavy, because again, you'll smear it. You'll fade your ink lines a little bit. But there we go. There's a little bit of a. There's a little bit of a treasure chest. Now, if you have any colored pencils or colored markers. I'm going to take a screen capture of that. You can come back in uh, and let's just let's just add a little bit of color. Let's just see what a little bit of color is going to do. A little bit of brown. Whoop. Look at that. Look at that. Now I'm going quick here. I'm not like doing a bunch of color here. But you can see if I have a little marker, I can come in here and color that treasure chest looking good. All right, we're about half an hour in. How's everybody doing? If you're doing all right, give me a thumbs up. Good. Let's all breathe together. Nice, big, deep, calming, relaxing breath. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for hanging out and drawing with me. I know these are crazy times we're all living in. It's nice to be able to take a moment with friends and just hang out and enjoy some things together. Good, 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 good. Thumbs up, everybody. Excellent. Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you. Sometimes when you're drawing, it's a nice way to disappear from the world. Spend some time with yourself, getting to know your imagination and ideas. 
take going back with those markers a little thicker yeah there's a little treasure chest all right looking good <laughs> yeah everybody good 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 thank you for the thumbs up and of course that will get a little gold band or something going up there again I'm in Photoshop right now you're using markers you're using pens and pencil on paper I'm using this Photoshop because I found that uh, doing an actual drawing on a piece of paper wasn't quite conducive to how the camera worked and everything right now. We might change that in the future. Uh, but if this works out fine, this works out fine. I'm trying to keep my tools very simple so I'm not using the computer. And it's not like any of this can't be done on a piece of paper. Whenever I do drawings for uh, Dungeon Masters Guild's work or different works, I'm usually drawing, as you can see here, on a piece of paper. And then I go back with ink and then I scan that into the computer and I use the computer to clean up some of those mistakes like where I drew these lines over the edge a little bit. I'll clean that up and on the computer but my original drawings are all done on ink and paper. There we go. Treasure chest. Now, very simple, very, you know, that's, it's, it's an okay treasure chest. I'm, I'm feeling all right with that one. But let's do a 3D version of that. And then we'll get on to a couple swords and then the beholder. We got like 20 minutes left in here. It's going to take a, we're going to get in as much as we can. And then of course in the future, I'm going to do more of these, look for these. I'm going to try to start to do one a week, maybe get to two a week, depending on what, where we're all at and where I'm at and how we can make this all happen. Okay. I'm going to delete. There we go. Goodbye, treasure chest. Goodbye. And now we're going to do a treasure chest a little bit in 3D. And I, I've been looking forward to doing this one too. Um, and I got some Harry Potter music on in the background. kind of goes with the theme. Got a pencil here. Got our pencil back. All right. Got our pencil. Just drawing a couple boxes. Get my pencil arm going. Get my pencil arm going. Now this uh, 3D tre treasure chest. Here is where it's at for the 3D treasure chest. You start with three lines, all right? One, a little bit lower here, but the same length. So we have a length here. A little bit lower, same length. Two, and then we're going to go a little bit farther, same length, a little, it could be a tiny bit shorter, but about the same length. Three, all right, one, two, three, three lines. See how they're see how they're positioned, and then we're going to connect these edges, and you'll start to see a 3D shape form up here. Boom! And now this is along the front of the treasure chest. This is the front of the treasure chest here. See that going on? It looks kind of like we have a wall. Side, front. Now here's a fun part. We're going to add a curved top to this treasure chest. So from here. To here, we're going to do a curve shape. Boom. Right? Exactly. It's gone quick. Uh, and then another kind of curved shape here. Add some lines. And again, this is our pencil sketch, so this can be a little different. We have our lock again. A handle. And then we have our boards. With 3D, uh, with like a 3D drawing, the angle matters. All right, that's an idea of a treasure chest there. Again, you're gonna draw these multiple times. You might just start with a, uh, with a slightly skewed rectangle or square like that. Bring it back, got the other side, got the top. Put those bands on it, remember those bands? I'm gonna kinda curve on there as well. Little circles as the rivets. I'm just going to kind of draw out a few of them here. And each one's going to get, some parts will be better, some parts will be not as good. I'm just going to kind of do them quick so you can see 
the lines I'm doing, the shapes I'm doing. Again, this is the pencil drawing. So this is your sketch. Ooh, I like that curve there, how it sits on there. Yeah, curve. Looking good, curve. Bands. Little rivets. Looking nice. You see me holding as I was looking at my own drawing? Pause. Put that lock on there. These bands can continue down. So you just drop those lines from those bands. Do some rivets on there. Do the handle. Again, this is the pencil sketch. So it can go a little quick. And then when we come back with the ink, we can uh, clean up some of these lines. So I'm gonna, I'm, I got my ink now and I'm gonna come back here. This is a treasure chest. And I'm just jumping around where some of these lines are because they're all going to start to work together a little bit. You can kind of see where I'm at. Got that lock there. I'm going to draw that lock in first so I can kind of Get those lines in there. This is a little lower than that one, so I'm making them a little thicker to even them up. This is the 3D treasure chest. Okay, looking good, looking good. Oh yeah, what is in here? What is in here? That's a little funky there, but again, practice. That's the only way you get better at all of the things you want to do in life. Practice, practice, practice. Some people have natural skill. Of course they do. Some people can just they show up being able to draw. I have a lot of amazing artist friends who are so much better than me, I'm almost embarrassed about my drawing level. Uh, even though I've done stuff that's sold professionally and I'm pretty happy with things that take me a while to make, but I have some friends who are so good. There's, there's almost always going to be somebody who's better at you at the thing you want to get into, but don't let that discourage you. Like, let that inspire you. They got there somehow. And a lot of people who do these things are nice people who will share with you their skills and techniques. But I guarantee almost all of them will say it took practice and they didn't start as good as they are now. You go back and look at some of the great comic book artists and some of their drawings that they started with and then where they got later, you'll see that. You'll see the progression, right? It just takes practice. It takes some time. And there's got to be a little bit of love for it, too. You got to get in there and want to get better. You can't just practice without your heart in it. You got to get in there with your heart some. Now, notice these lines on the side. I'm following, I'm doing parallel lines with there, with that action. I'm going to do some up here. Alright, that's a little bit of a treasure chest. I'm going to go back and erase this pencil now. I'm going to get my eraser out. Erase some of this pencil. Now, something I like to do when I'm drawing and I have items I've drawn is uh, I like to give a little bit of thickness around the edges of it. So I'll draw these here. I'll have a little bit of thickness. I'm just going back with my pen and adding a little bit of thickness to the outline of the whole thing, which gives it a little bit of depth, gives it a little bit of a uh, gravitas. And then it's interesting because then the thin lines that are inside of the drawn object take on a different weight. Every, it, Adding different weights to your line is very important for making things feel like they're part of the world. If you look around, the outlines of things are different than the inlines of things. There we go. A little bit of a treasure chest. All right. Not bad. I'm liking it. We got a 3D treasure chest there. Again, that starts with a one, two, three. One, two, three. Three. And you can kind of mess around with those different lines and it makes different types, different shapes of chests. This chest has more of a square top to it. If you want to, you can... Hello, King of Spooks. Hello. 
There we go. Treasure chest. Treasure chest. Again, this, uh, I'm going to put this online. One, two, three. I'm going to download this and put this up on Level Up with Louie on my YouTube channel. And then if you want to make any comments, if you aren't on Twitch at all, you're not part of this chat or anything, you can come uh, comment on the Level Up with Louie post about it all. And then I'll read some of those comments. If you have any ideas about what you'd like to draw or get done. Oh, man. Ten minutes left. All right. All right. Next thing. Next thing. Here we go. We got two more things here. Real quick. We're going to draw them and we're going to see what we get in ten minutes. You're right. Not going to fit it all in, but that's all right. We're going to see what we can do. Uh, the next one is we, you're going to use some of those points. We're going to what's inside that treasure chest? What is what's inside there? We got some swords, my friends. And for me, a sword starts with a basic line, and then the hilt, a line and a hilt, a line and a hilt. And each one of these is going to be slightly different, but that's where it starts. A line and a hilt. That one has a little bit of curve to it. That's cool. I'm going to come back, uh, basic sword. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. Line, hilt, and we're going to add a little bit of magic to this. What I like to do is I start with my point. One side of my point, and I'm going to add just a little bit of, what's this sword going to be? Look at that guy. Comes back in like this. That was all just kind of accidental, just having fun with it. Boom, boom. Handle, handle, and then down at the bottom we have the pommel. Look at that sword. That's a pretty fun one. Again, these are just pencil drawings to get me an idea about what it's going to be in the end. Look, we might be going a couple minutes over an hour, all right? I know everybody's scheduled an hour, but we might be just a couple minutes over. These are just some sword ideas. This one's going to come out to the side kind of crazy. Look at that guy. These are just some quick lines here. Uh, we can also make that hilt kind of up with your pencil. Just come in with your pencil and just do some sketches making these different blades. Weird Tigger Tiger. Great. Have fun at work. Enjoy that work call. Thank you for being here. Again, just quick little sketches with the uh, pencil, and that's going to give us an idea about where we're going with the pen. All right, some different swords, some different blades. This is probably a magic sword that's in there. Whatever monster is guarding this has to be a pretty cool monster. All right, come back over with our pen. You can see I'm just kind of pulling just some sketches, just some quick lines back and forth. I like this sword to start with. This was a fun one. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to kind of go back over with our ink. And our ink line is more the defining line at this point. You're going to make a decision about where these lines are. Hear that epic music in the background? This is serious stuff, guys. little gemstone in the middle there. Sometimes I like to make a little magic. Pink, 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 pink. Little magic item right there. Let's turn this page even. There we go. This sword looked pretty cool. Coming in with that ink a little bit. And this is where you can clean it up. It's not quite balanced. So I'm going to try to even that out there a little bit. Clean up where that handle is. Just some quick lines there. Like, again, this is for like if you're going to do a map or something. Just some quick lines with these swords. This guy looks pretty cool. What sort of sword is Jack Sparrow going to use? I don't know if this sword would work. It's almost a Kopesh. Just kind of a curved blade that horse riders, horse riders used. 
little handle and see I'm off that pencil line because I'm more in balance with my ink line there. And all these swords are just kind of different little weapons, different items. Just a couple lines, but they all started with that basic line. They all started with this same basic line, but then I went in and just added a little bit of flair to each of them. I like this guy too. Look at that. A little sword. Some of the lines don't fully connect. Some lines are thicker than others. Depends on the weight you put on that brush stroke, the weight you put on as you're drawing. I like how this guy's turning out. Kind of neat. Got my marker right there. This guy's going to have a handle that's made out of multiple segments there. Looking good. Little gemstone at the end. All right, there's some swords made out of that basic line, straight and across, straight and a cross that can draw get you any sword. All those are based on that same item right there. Looking good, everybody. Looking good. So hopefully you now have some swords on your page. You have some swords and the treasure chest. You did some exercise drawing. Now we're going to get to the monster that has been guarding this whole thing. we got about 10 minutes left here. So we're going to jump right into it. Let me erase these guys. First of all, let me erase some of this pencil underneath. So the zoom ability does come in handy when I'm drawing in Photoshop for sure. But uh, when I draw on paper these days, I'll be honest, I, I'm using reading glasses to get that zoom ability so I can get in there and, and draw extra good. The zoom definitely helps you clean up some of the fine details and everything. But when I'm drawing on paper, you can, you can kind of see the size I draw things right here. So compared to my pencil, my pen, Things are a little, I draw a little sometimes for sure. I draw, I draw almost to the scale it would be on the actual Dungeons and Dragons map if I was using one inches, five feet miniatures. But the zoom does help when I go back in and clean stuff up and everything. That's why I like to draw on paper. If I'm making a product, I draw it on paper and then I bring it over to Photoshop to get that little, little intricate work done. Oh no. Let's erase some of that pencil real quick. Let's see how these look. Ooh. Ah. Look at those guys. I mean, zooming in on Photoshop is almost like you're just getting closer to the paper, in a way. Like a lot of artists, uh, you a lot of art, you do big, but you got to step back from it to see it right. And so there, I remember when I was in art school, taking art classes, there was a lot of times the teacher would be like, you're up close, you're into your painting, you're into your drawing, step back see the whole thing, see how it looks together. So it's kind of like zooming in is the same thing as stepping back from it. All right. The monster is going to be a beholder. And a beholder is, uh, you can see I kind of have a little, little drawing right down there of that guy. You can look him up online. A classic Dungeons and Dragons monster. And it starts with a circle. Here we go. We're just going to do one beholder here, and I'm going to kind of walk you through. Let's do this. The body is a circle. So I'm going to do a big circle here. All right, close. I'm going to come back with my pencil and sketch a little bit, round it out. Not my best circle, but an idea. And then we have his eye which is the big prominent feature on the beholder is a big eye right in the middle. So we're going to do a big eye like this. All right. Big circle, smaller circle. And then what I do is I'm going to make a little, come down, do a little dropping curved line underneath here. And that's kind of the jaw of the beholder. He's going to have a big open mouth. So we got big circle, little circle, jaw, and now... It's almost going to be a rectangle, but slightly curved on the edges for the mouth. All right, you see that? I'm just going to do it off to the side here. 
Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. That's going to be the open mouth of the beholder. And then for the eye stalks of the beholder, we're going to do some of those tubes that we did earlier. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to do 10 of them. That's traditional beholder. This one is going to have a few less. And I'm just going to pull them out here. Just some random tubes. Yours are going to be slightly different at slightly different angles. And we're going to put a circle on the end of these. A few more minutes there. We're going to do, go just past an hour on this one. If you need to check out, thanks for being here. I really, really appreciate it. I'm following those tube lines like we did in our uh, practice session, following those tube lines. And again, this is all the pencil a little bit. So every line doesn't need to be perfect. It's going to give us an idea about where we're going with this. These are going to be eyeballs themselves. I kind of put an eyeball around it, make it a little bigger eyeball right there. Now this uh, beholder, uh, one of the things that's going to make this a, a mean mad beholder is if we drop an eyebrow over this eye. And if we drop that eyebrow to almost be a point like this. Look how that almost looks like a mean face right there. Right? So we're going to drop an eyebrow in here. Something like this. A little eye. Eye has a pupil and then the lines of an iris around it. And the mouth has some teeth in there, which are just little triangles, like those points we did. We did some practice points. I'm going to put those practice points right in there. Teeth, and then teeth underneath here. Look at there. There we go. That's our beholder. That's our basic beholder going on. Looking good, everybody. Looking real good. Big circle, little circle. Goodbye, goodbye, thank you, thank you, thanks for being here. I will say hello to everybody for you. Uh, we're running just a couple minutes over maybe. We're going to try to keep it to an hour every session. Uh, beauty as duty art. I love that. I kind of sang, sung it out so I could see what that name was. Take care. Thank you all for being here. Kind of come in with our pen here. We're going to draw... I'm going to start with this eyebrow. You kind of do the eye. And sometimes you've got to ink in a certain order so you can um, so you can put the layers of the lines right. It's kind of an iris. I'm doing this a little quick. You can take your time a little more. I'm going to do this mouth. Got some teeth in here. Just little triangles. And what you can do is you can use some of those lines we were practicing to fill in the mouth here. Just ink it all in if you want. Make those teeth shine with the pearly whites. You can fill in that pupil in there. Going to have the outline with a little jaw line there. If you want to, you can give a little shading under that jaw line. And then you have these tubes. And we're going to, again, draw the outline of these tubes. I'm going a little quick here. I recommend you take your time on some of these. Connect. Tubes for the eyes going on. Connect. I hope you've had a good time. I hope you enjoyed drawing some swords and some monsters and some treasure chests. Again, send me some pictures. Let me know how this was. Let me see how your drawings turned out. Those are the eyes on the end of those stalks. And then we can use our little shading technique on the sides there. Uh, I hope you spend some time drawing every day. That's how you get good at these things. Again, anything you want to learn, it takes time. Guitar, drums, flute, drawing, juggling. You just got to spend a little bit of time every day. Don't get frustrated with yourself. Don't get upset that it's not how you want it to be. Get out a new piece of paper and try it again. Get out your pencils. Get out your markers. Spend some time drawing. 
This is just a little bit of shading going on, a little bit of monster eye. Going back in with the pen, that's where you can add some life to this. Again, I like to add a little bit of thickness around the edges of things. Ooh, looking good. Make sure you hug somebody you love. Make sure you spend some time being nice to people. Drink plenty of water. Enjoy the friends you have and the people around you. Like, I enjoy all of you being here. It really uh, warms my heart that you could spend a little bit of time with me today doing some drawing. Uh, this was mainly for kids. So if you're out there, if you're a kid and you're learning to draw, go check out other YouTube channels about drawing. Everybody you learn from is going to give you a new technique, something that you can learn and take with you and put into your toolbox. Like Everybody has a different way of doing something. You'll see somebody drawing a beholder completely different from me. And you'll be like, oh, I can use that technique. Like You pick up your own pieces along the way and put the puzzle, to, puzzle together how you see fit. That's the joy of drawing. Everybody has a different way of getting into it and making it happen for them. Here is my beholder for the day. Looking kind of mean. Looking kind of rough. I'm going to erase these pencils here. There we go. Erasing, erasing. Let that ink dry and get in there with the eraser. There we go. There we go. Pretty scary, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. Let's drop back into the uh, OBS. You're going to see this screen happen for a second here. Kind of crazy. Whoa. Layers of screens. Uh, and then we're going to go to uh, goodbye. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. My favorite D&D &D character. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll say hi to everybody for sure. Thank you guys so much. We're going to do this again. Look for it on Level Up with Louie and uh, Facebook. I'm going to post about it. If you have any comments, go to the Level Up with Louie post. I'm going to put this up on YouTube. Send me a message if you want certain things drawn and want to see something in the future. Um, my favorite D&D character is, uh, his name is Jarlaxle. And he's a dark elf from Menzo Barons on. He is kind of an antithesis to... Uh, to Dritz, who's a good dark elf. Uh, Jarlaxle's in the middle. I think he's a great, fun character. If you want to read some of those books, they're by R.A. Salvatore, Bob Salvatore. Great books, the Dritz series. Yeah, right? You saw the Inception, the multiple layers. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Enjoy everything. Don't forget to drink some water and breathe. Cheers. Thanks for being here. Goodbye.